Inside Property. Behind the scenes insights with Australia's top property market influencers and commentators. Hi okay, everyone, how are you going? Uh, welcome to Inside Property. Phil Tarrant, uh, your host uh, today. I'm joined by Steve Waters. He is the director at Right Property Group, a uh, long-time friend of Spa Property Investment, also someone I've known for many years who I think knows a little bit about property, could probably learn a bit more, but I'm still working on him. But uh, brought him in today just to get a bit of an inside view of how he's seeing things and uh, the market right now. Steve, is it a good time to be a property investor? I think it's always a good time to be a property investor. Mm. It's just how you prepare yourself to be the property investor is, is more to the point, I think. Uh, but we're certainly entering in certain areas of Australia a very exciting time. Mm. And where are you at the moment? What's your, what's your last week been like? Um, mainly chatting with agents. Are agents receptive to your phone calls right now? They're telling you to nick off and uh, yeah. they've got more offers over here that they can uh, it, uh, sell. It's Look, it, it is on how quickly an agent returns our phone call is a bit of a barometer of the market. Mm. Uh, and I say that tongue in cheek, but or maybe a true word said in jest, because if I go back six months ago, agents were ringing us, uh, whereas now we've got to ring them two or three times to get that reply back, which just shows the buoyancy of the market or the other buyers uh, within within the market at the same time. But certainly open homes, as, as mobility uh, and the relaxation of social distancing becomes more prevalent, mm. open homes are becoming larger, uh, sales agents are getting more offers. And that's making it a lot harder for us, which is, you know, it's what we do, Mm. but it's quickly becoming in some areas throughout Australia more of a, we need to be uh, prepared and act uh, accordingly and and quickly to be able to secure what we believe is a good opportunity rather than chasing a market, which is the point. It is. So... This is very much about what's what's happening inside property. So I'm very fortunate, as is Steve. We come from from different angles, but similar sort of outcome where we we navigate the property markets in Australia. Uh, we form our views, our opinions on what we learn uh, through chatting with people, but also from what we read in the markets. A really good balance between data and the realities of the narratives of what's happening on the ground. I think that's what best property investors do. So moving forward, we'll make sure we bring in different uh, people to have this chat just to see what they're up to. Um, and that's what I find as part of my learning experience. And Steve, in many ways, has been in property for uh, a lot of years. So I lean on him when I want some actual facts and figures of what's going on. What are your investors saying to you right now, Steve? Is there a lot of FOMO in the market? Everyone's sort of coming out the Christmas going, quick, Steve, I need something, I need something, I need something. If I don't get it right now, I'm going to miss out. What's going to happen? Price is going to go up. It's going to be more expensive. What's going um, on? Look, I'd, I'd like to think we educate our clients enough mm. to not ever get FOMO and, and take the, you know, the early worm, so to speak. Uh, But the market in general is starting to get an element of of FOMO uh, throughout certain corridors. And we can see that it's a a combination of first homeowners, upsizes, downsizes, but also an element of the general public investors that are starting to infiltrate the market, if you will. Mm. Uh, And we can see that too with some investor lending data starting to creep up. Um, But I'd suggest that in three months' time when that next round of data comes through, you're going to see a completely different set of numbers. because it's happening now mm. and the data is, is for, uh, reverse facing, uh, if you will. But certainly there's an element within the market that uh, well, a good example would be when you have an open home that has circa 50 groups through it and there's 20 offers uh, that day of which you know half a dozen are up cash unconditional, that's giving you an element or a, a, a look into the market on its buoyancy, because in a soft market, you don't get that. It's where you get to dictate terms, condition, and price. Uh, Now it's more about be very careful on the terms and conditions that you're asking for, because there's a good chance that you won't get it. So what are the... So what are the numbers that matter right now, Steve, um, that you're looking at in terms of approaching this market? Um, are you looking at vacancy rates? You're looking at clearance rates and auctions? You're looking at price growth? Or is most of your intelligence coming from your discussions with agents, visiting the open homes, knowing what's going on? A combination of everything. Mm. That, uh, vacancy rates are a, a precursor to what the cash flow of the property is going mm. to produce. Um, the open homes is a good indicator of who's interested in property, but certainly what the agents are telling us uh, in terms of the sale results at that moment in time is very important to us, uh, as opposed to the data that, as I said earlier on, is three months reverse facing. But when you put all of that into the pot, uh, the ingredients are, are looking very attractive for growth uh, throughout certain corridors, as is the cash flow, because whilst we have our cash flow increasing being our rents, we've also got decreasing 
uh, external costs such as our interest rates and and the like. So mm. it's a it's a pretty good situation. Who are you bidding against when you're at auction or sort of private treaty? Uh, mm. Different states, obviously, different ways and and, and uh, cycles in which uh, property operates. For example, Perth is in a big auction market, right? So yeah. in, in New South Wales, you're seeing a lot of properties going to auction and you know, I chat to a lot of auctioneers and see what's going on. Who are you up against? Who's who's out there in the market right now trying to get these properties? And a lot of this will be connected with this FOMO, right? You don't yeah. want to be paying overs because you've got more people operating in market with low interest rates. It's a good point because the... The auction rates, you shouldn't put too much weight onto the auction rates because different states uh, have their own anomalies within auction rates. Mm. So as you mentioned, Perth's not a big auction state, nor is Brisbane. Sydney and Melbourne traditionally are. So we're seeing higher clearance rates there now. But our competition, if you will, or who we're bidding against, who we're throwing offers against, um, is literally, I believe... Uh, a line down the middle between home occupiers, generally speaking, and investors. There's a good equal amount uh, to both both camps, mm. if you will. And first time buyers are on the rise right now. You're seeing them in a lot of auctions because yeah. you, know, you normally buy in that af- affordable range. Are they out there because numbers are up? Yeah, look, it it depends really. First time owners aren't traditionally very confident in auctions. So mm. you'll see the first time owners, generally speaking, start to put in offers after an auction or they fall into the trap of putting in off- uh, offers before auction. Um, but mainly they'll go for tri- private treaty because there's obviously a lot of checks and measures that you need to go through as a mm. first time owner especially if you're getting the grant. Um, but tradition, or what we're seeing, I should say, the first time owners uh, are out in force where it is cheaper to own it than it is to rent it. Um, and that's across the country. Mm. And for you right now, this, this current market as we lead up to Christmas, what are the tactics that are working for you buying in private treaty? How do you make sure if you like a place, you get it and you control it and get off the market as quickly as possible? Um, it's it, Preparation, preparation, preparation. And that's around your finances, your capital and your cash flow requirements and capacities, but also forging the relationships with particular sales agents because more so now than ever, you need to be in front of an agent's face to be first cab off the rank, uh, if you will. And it could be something texting them every day um, or physically dropping around there to introduce yourself or to reintroduce does that stuff yourself. Matter? Does it? Oh, absolutely it does yeah. because you're competing against people like us who are literally ringing the agent, communicating with the agents, hundreds of agents every day. Mm. Um, and we are in their face. And so you need to be as purchasers in their face as well. So people talk about supply and demand when it comes to property. It's um, a, a key base driver that most kids learn at school. Yeah. Uh, the bigger the demand, uh, the less the supply. Prices normally get more expensive. It's a reverse. It's the other way around. Is it a seller's market right now? Uh, it's getting to that point. Yeah, mm. absolutely. In some areas, it is becoming a seller's market. However, I don't know if they realise that yet. Mm. And, the, and the, there's a big difference there. Um, in some areas, though, if we talk, talk about the inner city um, precincts of attached dwellings of Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney, well, then that's... That's a buyer's market if you can find one because Mm. the vacancy rates are so high. But good quality housing, good stock in good areas with the right fundamentals, um, it is becoming a seller's market. And if it's not about price, once again, it's about terms and conditions. So how do you balance then um, your ambitions as a property investor to enter the market or build your portfolio uh, in an environment which is conducive to investing, i.e. very low rates in a market that would appear to be on the rise? How do you balance that with making stupid decisions through um, too much ambition, uh, moving too quickly, over zealous. You know, what are the best investors doing? Um, pr- once again, preparation, and that preparation might be not just about finance, but it might be education uh, as well, getting the right team around you, which could be anything from painters all the way up to conveyances, solicitors, accountants, uh, advisors, uh, and the like. But I think having a plan that is able to be Uh, to pivot when necessary is important. So when we talk about creating a plan, it's not a narrow banded plan that you cannot divert from those parameters. You need to have the flexibility for the anomalies of life, whether that be kids, employment changes, rates up, down, pandemics and the like. Mm. Um, A good strategy will be able to ride out all those inconsistencies. Okay, quick news uh, piece here, Steve, and we've got another couple of seconds here to cover this off. Um, on smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, Canberra bucks the trend with continued growth. What's happening in Canberra? Do you like it? Yeah, we've been in Canberra for probably eight months now, or thereabouts, even a bit longer. Um, 
it is it is a service-based economy around Parliament essentially, mm. uh, and we're seeing that even the outlying areas of the ACT are doing very well. Cash flows on the way up, i.e., rents, so is prices. Um, however, just be aware the cost to operate within the ACT uh, is a little higher than other states. Steve Waters, director. Right, Property Group, thanks for your time. Know, really good. Remember, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. We'll see you back next week for Inside Property. 